Hey guys, so today we're checking out a new AI coding assistant, which is pretty impressive and may actually replace my usage of things like Cursor, GitHub Copilot, and Windsurf. Now, this one that I'm looking at today is called Augment Code, and this is an extension for VS Code, as well as for various other JetBrains IDEs. So not its own AI coding editor per se, but more of a coding assistant that acts as an extension and works in your existing environment. Now, this has a lot of features that differ from some of the other AI coding editors I'm sure many of you have used. So stick around, I'm gonna dive through them and share with you when you might wanna use this one because it does have kind of a unique use case. So I'm on the landing page here and we can see that Augment is really branding itself as the first AI coding assistant built for professional software engineers and specifically larger code bases. Now that's been my experience with this assistant. It's not something that's really designed to go from zero to one or to build something completely from scratch, but more so to get into a larger code base, understand the context pretty much immediately and really quickly make accurate changes. So rather than spinning up 25 new files and building entire new features completely from scratch, it's more so about working in existing code bases and making productive changes, which is what most software engineers are doing day to day anyways. And you'll see if you work with a lot of the other AI coding assistants, they're kind of the opposite. They work really well at the beginning when you're getting a lot of new stuff, building new features, editing 30 files at a time. But but then as soon as the context gets too large or they're thrown into something existing that they don't understand or that you haven't been working on for hours with them, they really far, fall apart, sorry, and they can't kind of make the changes that you're looking for. So anyways, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna demo this for you, but I do wanna be clear, this is an assistant, not a coding editor, and it does integrate with VS Code as well as various JetBrains IDEs. It is free, I wanna go over the pricing for you quickly. So obviously there are paid versions, but with the community version, you get pretty much unlimited everything and then 3,000 chat messages per month. The one thing to be aware of is that if you use the free version, any of the code that you have, it can train on. So that's kind of the price that you pay if you wanna use this for free. You can use it as long as you want, but any code that you're writing, it's gonna be training on. Whereas if you pay for the professional or enterprise version, then of course your code is secure and it's not doing any AI training on your code. So some people have different opinions about that. Me personally, I don't really care. Most of the stuff I do is public anyways, so I'm happy just to use the free version. And before we go any further, I do just quickly want to mention that this video has been sponsored by Augment. However, they have no editorial control over what I say, and they pretty much just reached out and said, hey, we have this new thing, check it out and make a video on it. And that was it. They didn't tell me anything specific I had to say in this video. So with that in mind, let's get started. I want to set this up. In order to do that, I'm going to go to install and I'm going to make a new account and then I'm going to connect this in VS Code. So once you've got an account created, you just need to install the extension. Now I'm gonna use VS Code, but you can also use various JetBrains IDEs. So I'm gonna to go to the extensions tab and just type augment, and we're gonna go ahead and install this. So I'll just install the pre-release, but you could go with the normal release version as well. And that's because I'm just working in VS Code Insiders here, uh, which is kind of like the beta version of VS Code. Don't worry, it's pretty much the same thing if you're using normal VS Code. And you can see here that it gives me kind of welcome to augment, opens up this chat window. And then what I need to do, of course, is sign into my account so that it connects this and it can use the cloud resources. So let's go to start using Augment and let's sign in. Okay, so I signed in and you can see that what it did is it started syncing my code base, which actually happened pretty much instantly. And this is the thing that Augment works really well with is keeping track of that context and syncing it and constantly indexing it, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. So you can see that it finished syncing my code base and then it gives me a description of all of the stuff that I have in my code base. So I have a front end, I have a back end, I have a content management system, and then it just explains exactly what the application is. So the application appears to be a platform for a discourse based community with a premium course content access. It uses Docker for containerization, et cetera, et cetera. And then it gives me some questions that I might want to potentially ask here that I could then click on and it will explain. So Augment works well, obviously, to generate code, but also to explain and understand code, which is something useful, again, in larger code bases. And it synced this entire code base in about two seconds. And this is a fairly large code base that I've been working on personally for kind of a low ticket community that I'm going to be building out shortly related to some Discord server 
numbers. And anyways, it's going to be like hosting some courses and giving people access, but it's fairly complex. We've got a lot of files and a lot of stuff going on. So anyways, that's the basics here on getting this set up. And now I want to show you some of the various features that it has. So I just moved it to the right side of my screen because this is where I prefer my coding assistant. And what we can do inside of here is start using various commands as well as configuring the settings. So if you press on this right here, the three dots, or you hit control shift or command shift A, it's going to open up the augment settings where you can read through here and configure everything. So you can insert a completion, turn off the completions, make a new chat, document a feature, go through the settings, etc. And then if you want, you can also press up here and kind of make a new chat window. So you have the context, at least for the chat refreshed and you can view all of the chats that you have here. Now, the interesting thing is that you can actually just give it commands to do something. So for example, I can say slash find, and this tells it obviously that I'm going to search for something. And I want to look for maybe front end auth state management. So where I'm storing my various JWT tokens, etc. So let's see if we get the response here. All right. So we get the response here and you can see it's showing me exactly where the state management comes from. For example, I have a store shows me the library that I'm using and then gives me some information on, for example, the interceptors, how I'm calling the uh, various URLs, etc., where the routing is happening. So all of that's good. Now, beyond just slash find, there's some other actions as well. So for example, we can explain and then I can just select code that I might want to explain. So I have if we go to maybe API V1 endpoints authorization, maybe I want to explain a various function. So let me just make this a little bit bigger and let's go with this. OK, so I'm going to highlight that it can show ex show us sorry, the exact selection in the file that we're working in hit enter and let's see the response. OK, and I actually didn't even make a cut in the video. I was expecting to. That's why I stopped talking for a second. But you can see that it actually gave us the response pretty much instantly. And that's one thing I have noticed with this is that it works very fast. I don't know how it's so much faster than a lot of the other assistants, because behind the scenes, this is using Claude 3.5 Sonnet, at least currently as its model. But you can see that it explained this and generated the text. And generally, this works way faster than a lot of the other coding assistants that I'm used to using, for example, like Windsurf. AI code editor cursor, those are significantly slower. So obviously there's a few other things we can do. For example, we can fix something, we can write a test, we can document. So I'm going to say, OK, I want to document this same selection and let's see if it generates a doc string or if it gives me some more information. OK, so it's going to go ahead and do that again. Very quick there. I didn't even make a cut and I can press on apply. And what it will do is open up this diff editor. Now, I really like this diff editor that it gives me because rather than just instantly applying the change in the file and then forcing me to revert the change, if there's an error, it opens it in like a GitHub diff view. So I know exactly what it is actually changing and I'm not getting confused. So I like this. I can press accept all. I can view the different changes. Obviously, there's only one here and then I can just accept. So I'm going to accept that. And now I have a doc string and it's documented that function. OK, and then I can continue and we can have some more action. So for example, I can write a test for that same selection. So let's do that and let's see what it gives us now. OK, so there we go. We've got the test generated. Now, that was probably about five or six seconds. I am cutting it in the video just to make it faster for you guys. But notice that because this is a new file, I can go ahead and press on create. So rather than editing the existing file, it will just create a new one. And then you can see here the file now exists. And then if I scroll down, it will tell me anything else that I need to do. So for example, I should add this to my requirements.txt. And then I can run this by running the command pytest, backend, etc., to verify that it is working. So it's generated that whole Test. It's implemented the mocks. It's used PyTest. Uh, and obviously, I mean, I could read through this and make sure it's correct, but I'm sure it's fine for right now. And if we go back here, you'll see that it's actually created that file for me. So I'm going to have to find exactly where it is. So it's inside of tests and it's actually created the directory structure as well. API v1 endpoints and then test auth.py. And that is correct and exactly where I would want this to be structured, which a lot of times I find the AI models have difficulty with. So that is kind of the main commands. And that's obviously within the chat window. You can also just ask it to do anything that you want, whether it's a query or a question or it is something to generate code. And I want to talk to you about how this handles the indexing, because this is unique compared to a lot of the other models. So I just pulled up a blog post here from Augment and it explains how the indexing system works, which I think is interesting to understand because this is significantly better, at least at large context management and awareness compared to the other AI assistants. So the TLDR is right here, but you can see that it updates within seconds of code changes rather than, you know, 10 minute delays. So a lot of the other AI coding assistants, they'll update the context, for example, every five or 10 minutes, whereas this happens pretty much instantaneously, which allows it to track massive 
massive file changes across even things like branch switching. So for example, you might have a massive feature branch where there's hundreds of different changes or files changed. And if you switch to that branch or between that and maybe the develop or the master branch, Augment will automatically track all of that context change so that immediately it knows what's actually going on in your code base. Now, you can also see that it uses custom AI models and custom embeddings rather than generic embeddings. There's a lot of other things here uh, that it kind of goes through, but that's the main stuff that I wanted to cover. Now, here's a quick diagram on kind of what this is doing, but really this is focused on indexing your code as quickly as possible to always track the most relevant context. So you'll notice, again, if you do a lot of changes in a lot of the other AI assistants, it struggles to keep track of all of those, and it ends up kind of using like previous information or just wrong context. And for example, a lot of times it will actually hallucinate if you ask it a question about something that doesn't yet exist, or maybe it was in another branch, and it will give you all kinds of weird replies. So here it kind of explains the architecture of the indexing, so you can look at that if you want. And I'll leave a link to this uh, in the description in case you guys want to check it out. But again, you can go through here and it kind of just explains how this works. And I thought it was interesting because it's a little bit of a new approach to kind of tracking all of that context. So anyways, that's kind of the main takeaway for me with this AI assistant is how it does that. And it is just so insanely fast at giving me these replies. Whereas when I use Windsurf, for example, there's times where I literally wait like three or four minutes to get a response because it's just writing code very, very slowly. Now that said, usually it's pretty good, but it just takes a very long time. And again, it runs into that context issue. So beyond that, let me go through a few more features. Of course, like all of the other assistants, you can tag context. So if you use the add symbol here, you can see that we can just do default context, which is whatever file we're working in and just the entire system. We can tag individual files, folders, recently opened things. We can also tag documentation, which is interesting. So it has, I believe, like over a hundred kind of already imported pieces of documentation. So if you want to reference, for example, the new React router DOM documentation or the Vite documentation or something like that, then you can just do that. So like here we could say, you know, at .NET, and then we can say, hey, based on documentation of this feature, go and do this thing, which I think is quite interesting because then it gets that relevant context immediately. Now, I also have the ability to add something called user guidelines. So if I go to at and I go user guidelines, it will open this up for me. And here I can write a guideline that I want to persist uh, through using this, you know, AI assistant, right? So I can say something like use only ES6 uh, arrow functions for new React components, okay? If we could spell this correctly and then go ahead and press save and now the guideline's been updated and then if I start doing something, it should use that guideline. So if I ask it to maybe create a new component for me, so let me get out of this here, I'm gonna say create a new lesson component for me in the front end. Let's see if it follows that guideline. Okay, so the response is done. We can see it's generated a new lesson, given us the CSS file and also given us the lesson view.tsx as well as the lesson view CSS and it's went and added a page for me in my app router. So if I wanted to apply these changes or create the new file, then I could just press on create. You can see it's actually gone ahead and done that in the correct directory structure as well. Can create this one, scroll down again, create here, and let's see what's next, create. And then I can apply, it's gonna open up that diff change. And again, I can just accept all of these changes. And then we can test obviously and see if that works. Now, the one thing I will say here is that again, this is better at the smaller changes. So that wasn't that many changes that it did. It did create some components, but if you had like 20 or 30 files, it is a little bit annoying to have to keep clicking through and press create, apply, create, apply. Whereas in some of the other editors, you're able to just do accept all and it just does all of the changes. So that's why I'm saying this is typically better for more common complicated changes in the existing code base rather than just creating a ton of stuff completely from scratch because of the way that you kind of apply and create the different files and changes. Hopefully that makes sense, but that is how that works in terms of the guidelines. Now beyond that, of course, there's a lot of other features as well. So you can just chat with it as we've kind of already seen, but you also can just add an instruction directly in the code. So for example, I can go to this use effect, I can highlight it, and then I can hit control I or command I. It's gonna open up the diff view, and then I can just ask it what I want it to do. So I can say, you know, make this more readable or something like that. Go ahead and press edit, and then we can watch it in live time here. Go ahead and make those changes and give me the diff. So there we go, and then I can press accept. 
accept here or just accept all. And then one thing to note is that you do need to save the file after the changes have been made if you want that obviously to be applied to your code. So go ahead and save. Now, actually, I'm looking at the code and I realized there's a mistake here with handle logout. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight this. I'm going to hit control L. That's going to open up the chat window for me. And I'm just going to type and then slash fix. And then I'm going to fix that line. What it's going to do is it's going to find the error highlighted by the IDE and it's going to tell me what the problem is. So it says, hey, the issue is that handle logout is being used in a dependency array before it's defined. Uh, we need to use use callback to memoize it, whatever the issue is and then it generates the fix for me and then I can apply it. So let's go ahead and press apply. Let's just accept all. And then we should see here that now we no longer get that issue. OK, so I like those commands for quickly handling those little errors. And again, it picks up that IDE error message for me, automatically adds it in the context and then allows me to fix it. So there are a few other features that I quickly want to show you here. And one of them has to do with the autocomplete. So for example, if I go to my back end here, you can see that I have a root like me slash onboard slash me, something like this slash guilds. So let me just kind of you know spec something out that I might potentially want to write. So let's say I start writing, you know, at router dot delete and I say slash me slash deactivate or something like that. Now the autocomplete is very good. So you can see already it's giving me the function. So async define deactivate user, current user, uh, and we need the DB session. It's going to give me this and then it's just going to start like automatically writing the code for me. So you can see that we need to delete the discord token, delete the user from the database, deactivate them. And then if this is in development mode and there's an error, then we're going to return this. So like I just hit tab a few times and now we have pretty much the entire function written. This might not be exactly what we want. So we could say, you know, here, uh, rather than delete, I want to deactivate it by, you know, adding a property or something like that. Okay. So let's go property, hit edit, and then let's see if it makes those changes for us. Okay. So user dot deactivate user rather than delete user. Okay. Accept. And then I'm going to go back to my users model now. So if I go model user and I'm going to say here, let me just add this to chat, add a feature to deactivate the user. And we can kind of continue along this chain of thought and start adding all of those features right to deactivate the user. OK, so you can see it's made those changes. So let's go ahead and press on apply. Let's just accept those all. Now we have the dot deactivate and the reactivate. And now naturally we might want to add the reactivate endpoint. So I'm going to say add a new endpoint to reactivate the user, something like that. OK, and let's see if it goes ahead and writes that. OK, so let's press on apply. You can see that it throws in this new function here and now we have the ability to reactivate. Obviously, we can make this a little bit smaller so we can read it and we can see here that it writes the code. Obviously, I would have to review this, but it looks good at first glance. So obviously, there's a lot more features that I could showcase here, but generally, I think this is a pretty good demo of this tool works very well. Again, the main pros is that it's extremely fast. You can use it for free as long as you don't mind it training on your data and and it is very good at context awareness, significantly better than a lot of the other models. That in mind, it's not the best at doing tons of massive changes at once. I find this more as an assistant than it is something that's going to do a ton of code generation for me. Yes, you can get it to do that. But again, based on kind of the editor and the UI, I find it's better at those more complex but smaller changes that require that context awareness. So I think there's definitely a place for this in my workflow. I'm going to keep it installed in VS Code and keep using it. And I do like that it has that JetBrains integration because I'll probably throw it in there as well because I do use JetBrains quite a bit for very Python heavy projects. Anyways, guys, with that in mind, that's going to wrap up this video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I look forward to seeing you in another video.